Hey gorgeous, today we're gonna talk about how you can get comfortable with the discomfort and downright anxiety that can crop up at the edge of your comfort zone. Let's get to it. Welcome to the powerhouse, Vanessa Long here, coach, trainer, and creator of Discovering Your Passion and Purpose, the Business Building Foundations, and the Seasons of Success. It's time for your mojo moment in which I share one of my favorite inspirational quotes and then give you a power tip so you can take the inspiration and make it practical right away. For regular motivation, make sure you click subscribe and ring that bell. Our quote today is from my own upcoming book, Love Money Magic, and it says, learn to dance at the edge of your comfort zone. That's the only place where growth can happen. So let's talk about this because I do mention comfort zone quite often. And the reason for that is because in the work that I do with my clients, if we don't expand, if we don't grow their comfort zone, if we don't create more capacity in their comfort zone, they will never get to their goals. In fact, the definition in Neuro Linguistic Programming, or NLP, is that your comfort zone is everything you're currently comfortable doing. Everything you have is inside your comfort zone. Everything you don't have, all the goals, all the dreams, everything you don't know how to do, that's outside your comfort zone. So you can see why it would be really important for us to get good at moving out of our comfort zone so that we can actually have what we want, right? The problem is we typically use a very masculine model. <laughs> so we talk about things like taking a run at it, ramming up against the edge of our comfort zone, pushing through the edge of our comfort zone. Very, it's very masculine. <laughs> And that's the way business has worked for a long time. We live in a very patriarchal culture where the masculine has been dominant. The problem with that masculine model is that it sets up the edge of our comfort zone as our enemy. In fact, one of my favorite motivational speakers calls it the terror barrier, <laughs> which is no help at all because it actually trains us to expect to get terrified as we get closer to the edge of our comfort zone. And that's not going to help us get to where we want to be. What we want instead is to create a very different experience because being terrified or anxious or afraid all the freaking time, and when you have your own business, you will be doing this all the time if you want to grow and succeed. The problem with that adversarial model is that it creates so much stress and burnout and resentment and exhaustion that eventually we just want to give up, go back to the middle of our comfort zone where it's pretty darn comfy, we know exactly what's going on, and just forget about it. And that, when you have a soul-centered business, is a tragedy. You're here to change the world. So let's figure out how to approach the edge of the comfort zone without freaking out about the fact that you're approaching the edge of the comfort zone. I like to treat the unconscious mind as a friend, an ally, and I like to have it on board. And the other problem with this adversarial model is that when we're constantly slamming up against the edge of the comfort zone, we can trigger an ab react. And that ab react is our unconscious mind freaking out. Why? Because the most important rule, the, the most important guideline, its primary directive is to keep us safe. And its definition of safe is probably not the same as yours. When I'm training coaches in NLP, what I explain is that your unconscious mind will kill you to keep you safe. What is unsafe to the unconscious mind is anything new. Anything new is unsafe. And since outside the comfort zone is new, right? You haven't been there before, that's why it's uncomfortable. The unconscious mind actually perceives it as unsafe and it doesn't want you to go there. So you actually need to figure out a way to get your unconscious mind on board with the idea of doing something new. 
And that is no small task. It takes a lot of conversation <laughs> and a lot of persuasion. But if you don't do it, if you just stay in that masculine model of like running at the edge and slamming up against the edge, what will happen is it will blow up. Your unconscious mind will sabotage you and yoink you back to the middle of your comfort zone where you will be sitting and licking your wounds for the next few years. If you watch business people or celebrities or sports figures, you can actually hear the boing as they get yanked back into their comfort zone. In fact, we've seen it again and again, haven't we? Where someone with a really bright future, tons of potential, blows it up in the most spectacular of ways, and then we never hear from them again. Why does that happen? It happens because of ancient wounding and ancient programming that makes it unsafe to go for whatever it was that was outside the comfort zone. So let's find a different way to do it. Here's what I suggest. I suggest that there is a softer, more feminine way, a more magical way where we can actually transmute, in other words, transform, make from one substance into another, where we can transmute that fear and anxiety at the edge of the comfort zone, which is totally natural. Remember, the unconscious mind doesn't like change. We, with our conscious mind, can work with the unconscious to transmute that anxiety into excitement, into anticipation, into something that will boost us into the new thing. And this is what I talk about in the Seasons of Success, where I'm explaining moving from the line of fate to the line of destiny. When we get into destiny, our unconscious mind is actually supporting us instead of constantly dragging us down. So imagine how that would feel that when you went in to do something new, instead of feeling anxious or afraid, you felt excited because you truly knew you had complete cellular congruence, that what you were stepping into was part of a divine plan for your life, that it was part of your destiny. Doesn't that feel different? Well, that's what happens when you get into this beautiful divine alignment where you are moving towards your destiny, and that's when you can create real change. To get more on this, I've linked the Powerhouse Success Cycle Checklist in the description. It'll give you a little mini training, seven steps on how to create that real change. Change that changes you, your world, and the whole world. I know we are here to build a new world. This is how you do it. What's your nugget of gold today? What did you learn, realize, or remember that you can use right away to make your life better? What's one thought that you can bring up as you get close to the edge of your comfort zone that will really help to transmute that fear energy into joy and excitement. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you there. Help others to see this video by sharing it out with your powerhouse peers, clicking the thumbs up, that's super helpful. And if you haven't already, subscribing. And if you're feeling really keen, ring that bell so you get notified whenever we put up new content, which is every week. For those of you Mojo Masters who know to hang around until the end of the video, here is your bonus power tip. It isn't just dancing. Remember the quote was, learn to dance at the edge of your comfort zone. The dance is this energetic give and take with our unconscious mind, the divine, and the universe. We're all dancing together. But it isn't just dancing. It's play. That's the energy that we want to bring in here. We want this to be fun. I've learned that it is actually possible to have fun while you're creating a life you love and building a business that actually makes money. And for most of us, we were not brought up that way. We were taught, especially if you have that archetype of the wounded healer and you're a soulpreneur, we were taught to be very serious. We were taught to be very small and we were taught to be very safe. For many of us, play wasn't an option. I remember even when I was playing, I took it really seriously. I always had to win. I would cry if someone broke the rules. 
I couldn't handle it when anyone did anything unexpected because that triggered all my feelings of unsafe. And it has taken decades to unravel that. So if you're stuck in the place where when I talk about play and laughter and treating this like a game that you just kind of want to reach through the lens and throttle me, I get that. I get how scary play can be. And that's the reason that this is so hard for you right now. When you learn how to play, you'll be able to treat this experience much more gracefully, find that ease in your life that you've been looking for, and have fun. Not to mention the freedom that put you into this business in the first place. If you have any questions about that or you want to hear more about it, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to get that real change success cycle checklist. It'll walk you through what real change looks like because it isn't about being busy. It's about doing what really matters. And that's it for today's Mojo Moment. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.